Apex Legends Season 20 has seen its largest meta shift ever, and today we are ranking where every single Legends power lies after the introduction of the new Legend upgrade system. No BS, a lot to talk about, let's get to it. Starting in F tier, we have those who I think are pretty well bad. Truthfully though, there's not many legends that can be in here because it mostly depends on you, the player, and your playstyle. Ballistic is an odd use case as everything on paper seems pretty good, faster and more formidable fighting in the ultimate, locking players down with attack, and third weapon, but in reality, all this is pretty unneeded and you are sacrificing many team support, recon, rotational, or movement benefits that the other legends do get. He did get some nice buffs to his third sling weapon having void attachments and the ultimate radius getting boosted all the Way to 90 meters but if you are 90 meters away from your team you're probably just anchoring or you are being a bad teammate i do like his legend upgrades of having the attack last three times as long on the ground or having two charges but again this doesn't really change the game Seer is my only E tier legend with the rating of poor. Out of every legend's upgrade that we did get, I think Seer is truly the only legend whose upgrades don't really do that much. His passive is still good, finding where players are ratting and overall being able to relay that intel, not bad. However, his tactical is weak, easily avoidable, and his ultimate doesn't have the same mojo that it once did. I think if you wanna purely gain intel as to enemies' whereabouts like in rank, he could be a C tier legend, but otherwise, for combat and general gameplay, he's just not it anymore. D tier are my underwhelming legends, and we have Ash locking up this tier. Similar to the legends before her, her upgrades do not do a ton to enhance her overall playability. Her level two upgrades are really just not needed, and they aren't gonna change the game. And as for her level three upgrades, I think two snares sounds cool, but the snare as a whole is just weak. However, leaving a snare on the ground for 24 seconds is pretty interesting, because at least you can intimidate enemies to thinking that a spot is on lockdown. I think this does have some gameplay uses. In reality though, I wish her ultimate had some nice upgrades as I think this is the real playmaker for Ash, and if she gets some small buffs to her entire kit, she could be a real powerhouse. I think out of any of the lower tier legends, Ash does have the most potential to be a top tier pick with some tweaks. We are now getting to the legends who, in my opinion, do have some viability in Apex, but for the most part, C tier is gonna be just fine. Not bad, not great. If you like this legend, then I think his upgrades are actually pretty good, and this is one of my most played legends, Mirage. Love his legend upgrades. They make him a ton more fun, but I had to look at the entire meta of the game, and these upgrades just don't change the root problem with him, which is his power is dependent on the enemy's skill level, of course, to a certain extent, because you can outsmart and outplay. Time could favor Mirage as I can see some moments where being able to revive players with 75 health is nice and spamming tacticals now is not too bad but there's still better support legends with better revive capabilities and if you want to play aggressively then there are other options for this. For getting wins and grinding something like ranked he doesn't quite bring enough to the table. I think if you are pubbing it out and slaying the lobby he is more like a high B to low A tier which is awesome because really Mirage hasn't been here for me at least in the past but when you mix the modes he is just fine. Vantage I think saw some great quality of life buffs via her upgrades and for those who do enjoy her i think i could see her sliding up the list as the season goes on but for now she is in c tier something i'm very interested in is comboing watson and vantage if watson can double stack those ultimate accelerants and give them to vantage she does now get four bolts from using one which is pretty interesting however in this scenario i think watson's ultimate is way more valuable than vantage's sniper as for the level three upgrades to her ultimate to do damage and then relocate instantly with a tactical refresh it's pretty interesting but in a practical sense, I do not know if this is gonna really be needed or actually be useful. I think Vantage's core kit is pretty decent, but it is still in need of a little buff. Most legends received decent upgrades, although I think one legend who respawned really missed the mark on is gonna be Rampart. Nearly all of her upgrades are okay, but since they almost all revolve around the ultimate, I think this is a big misstep for her kit, as her walls, in my opinion, are gonna be what makes her shine. So getting enhancements to these would have been welcomed. It would have been cool if she also had a perk to upgrade weapon usage via reloads or ammo reserves for more than just LMGs. I don't think Sheila is bad, but I also think of it more of as a utility tool to bust into doors or apply pressure rather than a straight killing machine. It's also worth taking a moment to state that when I do look at the legend upgrades, I am asking the question of, are they really impactful? Are they gonna change the game? Or did they just keep things mostly the same for that legend? And this ranking video is not specifically for the upgrades, but since they are brand new, I think focusing on them does make sense. But do understand, I am taking a look at their entire kits. There's just so much to talk about that I can't cover all of this without the video being hours long. 
My great legends are in the B tier, and we do start with Bloodhound as they continue to be a great all around legend. The Hound is actually getting some viability in the ALGS right now due to the bang and blood scan combo, but for the most part, and for us normies and ranked and in pubs, the Hound is going to be a legend that you can't go really wrong with, but their power ceiling is a little bit lower compared to how they used to be. Scans are still great, and being able to get more of these through the upgrades is nice, but the level 3 upgrades of double body scan timer and 25 health upon knock is not going to really be useful. You have diamonds when scanning already, and just getting a health replenish would have been better if it was health or shields, so you could get that replenish every time, and not just when your shields are gone and an enemy has hurt you into health. Gibraltar has never really been a bad legend to use, and with his upgrades, this is going to continue to be true. Auto-reloading shotguns on Nox is the real deal this season, with the continual nerfs to SMGs and the digital threat no longer being on SMGs. Also, having the dome last 4 seconds longer means more protection in an endgame hot spot or if you absolutely need that relief when you are in the open four seconds means popping another cell maybe getting a battery or a med kit off combo this in with his ultimate for even more play options gibby is no joke in ranked and all of his abilities are literally bred for this mode i give him a high a tier rating maybe even s tier placement for ranked but for general pubs and just slaying out i do think he is more mediocre for this kind of like a c tier legend as he just really isn't that warrior movement or fragging type legend i really want to rank octane high as he is literally just so much fun to use but i had to leave him a little bit lower simply because i think even with his upgrades of having less damage from the stem and gaining an extra launch pad or more maneuverability in the air i don't think it really changes him that much yes having the two pads is awesome this means you can save them and make a wild late game rotation but a pathfinder zip line evac tower maybe a valkyrie ultimate it's going to more or less achieve the same thing and these are going to be way more seamless i will say simply by having the two pad option this does mean you can have them a little bit more frequently as you will get one charge and then immediately start building up a second one which will make it nice to have it more readily available as you don't have to wait that full 90 seconds every time anymore our last b tier legend is gonna be someone who i think is the most formidable combat legend revenant starting it off if you are looking for a pub fragger then rev is absolutely an a tier legend but for ranked he doesn't really bring anything in terms of team support or controlling areas but with horizon becoming more and more irrelevant with every update this does make a little bit of room for for Revenant to swoop in, so he could go up a little bit more as the season goes on. Getting a tactical refresh upon every knock also means more maneuverability. Revenant is a blast, and if you don't want to take Apex too seriously, then I definitely would pick him up and just focus on having a good time. As always, if you have any Apex questions or if you want to party up with others because randoms absolutely suck, hop in my community Discord. I'd also love to chat with you. Also, drop a comment down below with Buff Mirage if you think he still needs some love or if you think any other legend needs more upgrades than him amazing legends and there sure are a lot of them in a tier so let's first go over someone with continual potential crypto i will admit i am slightly biased as dripto used to be one of my mains but his upgrades are pretty decent more ultimates via a 20 percent cooldown reduction and being able to increase the damage range by 50 percent from his ult is kind of massive unfortunately everything still revolves around the drone and this does leave him a little hard to recommend at times but also he does have some buffs to make the drone feel a little bit quicker when deploying or recalling as well as when you are going into it manually i think if you want to be an active and attentive apex player then drone man can honestly do so much to accelerate his team's placement in ranked by controlling the match through endless recon and knowledge gathering i think this is what really gets for a guy when it does come to crypto so if you want to have this type of intel definitely give him a look at as he is absolutely great and one of the most misunderstood legends i actually think crypto if you pair him up with watson who is very good this season this combo can be pretty deadly a legend that is my main at the moment is Pathfinder, who is another great legend for various combat uses and overall team transportation. He had a couple small nerfs this season, but Pathfinder does still have a great combination of offensive power with the grapple and overall rotational capabilities via the zip lines. I do think his first upgrade perks of the ring console and survey beacon access is kind of mid, but being able to get a tactical refresh upon knockdowns is actually crazy. I would absolutely pick this unless you are playing very passively in rank and you want a little bit more safety via the damage reduction when it does come to riding zip lines. Pathfinder for me would be S tier if it wasn't for his absolutely massive and fridge like hitbox. 
Lifeline, however, is almost like a little bit of the opposite of Pathfinder, as she honestly hasn't been better than she is now in a long time. For overall team support, keeping the team going with the healing drone, and keeping them supplied from her ultimate, not to mention how it can bring in that potential Kraber, which can be a huge playmaker. I do think by the time you do get this level 3 upgrade, though, it might be too late in the game, and the amount of chances that you will have to get this care package weapon might be far and few between. Either way, faster revives, more tactical uses, or even a self-revive are all pretty good on their own, and I think Lifeline is going to be a great legend if you're in the lower to middle skill ranges, or if you are even a solo queue warrior. Sticking with that theme of support legends, we also have Loba in A tier. Loba for me has really always been about how formidable she is as a character, more about how she speeds up the pace of play, more fights in pubs, or less time spent looting in rank for better positioning. Her upgrade perks definitely are good, more tactical usage, better usage, or increasing the capabilities with her ultimate. I don't think Loba is any higher than a simply because she is kind of that convenience legend where if you are a well experienced player and you are moving a little bit quicker than like a bad player you can honestly get by with what she does provide also legends with great passives are usually the better legends in apex and when it does come to lobus passive of seeing loot through walls it's not really needed beyond the initial drop and race to get loot season 20 is absolutely the season where controller legends get some major perks and one that we do need to take a look at is caustic his level 2 upgrades are pretty good further gas trap throw range can be nice if a aggressively pushing, but I almost think the bigger gas cloud will be better, as Caustic honestly can already throw his barrels a pretty good distance. Being able to regenerate health while in the gas is absolutely crazy, and I think this makes him such a continual great pick for defensive players who want to grind placement and rank. Caustic's ability to control the game both passively and when pushing is something everyone will need if they do want to be flexible and kind of that player with the X factor to force some big plays. Flashes of the old days, OG Apex. This is what Wraith can provide this season due to how she can get her tactical back faster and the tactical activation timer is now quicker. These are absolutely more selfish or self-centered upgrades so when it does come to a top tier ranked team she doesn't necessarily have all that there but if you do want to play aggressively while still having some team support or movement with the ultimate she can provide this. I did momentarily think about putting her in S tier but for the most part she's going to play the same as she has in the last like handful of seasons. I think Wraith is a really great pub warrior legend who can either take those 1v3 squads or just extend her team's survivability through her entire kit. I used to have Newcastle in S tier, but the changes to the meta for season 20 had made me slip him down a rank or two. Mainly, this is the emphasis on certain legends' ability to break down and be a real problem for any legend with fortification like Newcastle has with his ultimate castle wall or that tactical mobile shield. Yes, these are still very good abilities, even more so than they were due to the upgrades they can get. But as I said earlier, I am looking at the entire game. Newcastle's mobile shield getting more health is honestly great, and so is having it move at sprint speed. Being able to move quickly through the open is a welcome change rather than having to do this weird semi-slow walk. I also think reviving players with 75 health is going to be a great addition for what I think is a top one, maybe top two revive legend in the game. I think Newcastle is the better option for upper ranked than say Lifeline is, but for pub play, I don't think he really brings what you want for pubs or fragging out, so I would look elsewhere for this. Bangalore did see some large indirect nerfs this season with SMGs losing the ability to hold digital threats. This means Bangalore cannot smoke an R9 spam anymore which I think is absolutely fair. Also, most of Bangalore's legend upgrades are kind of mediocre, probably because she already was a great legend and they aren't trying to break her even more than maybe she already was. She can get healing in smokes now, but I find that the 30 to 40 that it does give is pretty minimal and it's not going to last that long. Reducing the ultimate cooldown I think is good and seeing nades I suppose is also not terrible, but as a whole and for Apex, I think we are straying away from this concealment type meta that we have been in for the past year or so. Don't get me wrong though, A tier is still amazing and Bangalore is worthy of a pickup if you are looking for a hybrid legend. In some sense, what happened to Bangalore is also happening to Horizon, but at a much more gradual pace. Horizon has continued to dominate the Apex meta, and she still can be for the larger picture of fragging, getting wins, and supporting the team, but Horizon really only does one of these things very well, and it is her pure combat capabilities with the tactical lift and passive movement combo. She has really slowly been phasing out of the meta, mainly due to how the game has been shifting in playstyles, and what the game 
game really does prioritize, Horizon has been decimated with what it seems like 8 to 10 nerfs since her release nearly three and a half years ago. Really, the only legend upgrade that is worthwhile is a five second reduction to her tactile lift, but at the same time, this just makes up for the nerf that this ability did have this season. I kind of wish we had more unique upgrades to her rather than seeing ordnance through walls, seeing ammo in death boxes, and a mediocre 14% ultimate cooldown reduction. Personally, I am absolutely ready to see some of Apex's less used legends shine, so I'm not too upset about the slight horizon falter in the meta. One of those legends is kind of this next one, and we now have Fuse, who I honestly wanted to put slightly above A, but this time around, I'm also not doing plus or minus rankings in my tier list. However, good old Fusey is low-key insane as a fragging or pub legend, and honestly, not too bad as a ranked legend either. Similar to Bangalore, Fuse now gets a speed boost whenever a cluster does connect to enemies, which means his ability to force enemies to move and then push up has been massively enhanced. Traversing open areas, pushing into buildings, or retreating are all going to be done with way more effectiveness than in the past. Not to mention, if you are healthy, dropping an ultimate, popping a cluster, and then running in there with no slowdown because you do have that upgrade perk does have some incredible playmaking potential. I honestly could see Fuse being a must-pick legend in the ALGS, and as the season progresses, he might have the potential to be an S-tier legend. Best of the best and legends you absolutely cannot go wrong with are gonna be those in S tier. I also still have a God tier, which I always like to put above S for the legends who I think are the must use legends. But for starters, we do have Catalyst remaining in S. I struggled a ton between putting her in A or S, but I think Catalyst simply still brings too much to the table to not recommend. She's probably Apex Legends most formidable hybrid legend, even with the base nurse of her ultimate only going 40 meters and the timer being a measly 15 seconds. She she has defensive control, aggressive pushing, rotations in the open from her ultimate. She really has no weak points when it comes to her abilities. Being able to now throw traps further, place three traps, longer ultimate walls, or having it last longer are all great upgrades. I think if you want a legend who is going to be your main, either in pubs or ranked, Catalyst is someone that you can't go wrong with in either mode. Returning for the first time in quite a few seasons is going to be Valkyrie back in S tier. In some ways, I look at Valk almost as the replacement to Horizon. I understand this may be my most controversial take, but her legend upgrades are actually massive. What really made Valk slip a ways back wasn't necessarily the introduction of evac towers, but it was the nerf to her speed while using the jetpack in her fuel usage. She now pretty much regains all of this through her legend upgrades, meaning her ability to swoop in and around buildings, cliffs, and other objects while also being the person to finish fights or initiate fights is going to be why you want her, similar to Horizon. This directly fills the role of what Horizon could do, but also still having that tactile stun and ultimate rotation tool is just a nice add bonus. Not to mention, Valkyrie being able to fly away from Fuse's knock clusters, maybe a Mad Mag e drill, is definitely going to be needed. We also have Season 19's Conduit at the top of the game. I knew long before Conduit ever came out that she was pretty special, but after a full season of having her in the game, her potential has been realized and it is the real deal. She did get some nerfs to the tactile and ultimate, but the value these still have is very high high. Conduit excels at both pubs and ranked, and she also has the ability to keep the team up with quick shield replenishes, some relief from her ultimate, or to stop advancing enemies. Or of course, she can't just control engagements. I think her upgrades are easily going to make up for these nerfs. The ability to cut her tactical in half, and at the same time, give yourself two charges, I think is low-key going to be a sleeper pick. Obviously, the trade-off is not having the tactical last as long, which is warranted, but being able to give both of your teammates a shield replenish in an instant is a huge way to change the fight into your favor because even though it's not going to heal quite as much as the full one, you have a little bit more control to choose when and where you do want to use your tactical shield heal. God tier, the legends who I think are those that you absolutely can't not consider using. Watson is going to be the first. Her legend upgrades are actually just ridiculous. The amount of flexibility she has to support the team via heals from her ultimate and control massive amounts of area with her tacticals was already very good. But now being able to have double ultimate capacity and health takes it to another level. Being able to have two down at the same time also means you have that added flexibility and having faster ultimate accelerant usage means you can play her in a way that is way more 
aggressive, you can pop an ultimate, use an accelerant quickly, and then have another ultimate ready to go if you do need to move or rotate rapidly. And not only this, her ultimate generating arc stars from grenades that it does intercept really puts her on a plane of her own. I don't know if all of this is even needed for pubs, but she is just so good for rank that I cannot have her on the top of the meta. I don't really see a reason to go with any of the other controller legends when you are purely trying to control an area and have that be on lockdown. You got to go with Watson. For the first time ever, I am actually putting Mad Maggie not only in S tier, but in God tier. I almost cannot believe it either. As I kind of said at the very start, there's a lot of legend upgrades that are kind of just nice to have bonuses, but there's a few in the game that will just transform the way you play. Mad Maggie not only gets one of these, she gets two. Being able to hold two riot drills is honestly absurd. The pressure you can provide to enemies who are caught in small areas is going to be insane. She also gets a wrecking ball that will leave thermites, and this seems pretty basic, but it means enemies more or less will have to get out of their position if the ball does explode in the right spot. Her also getting a straight up buff to the wrecking ball of it no longer being destroyed upon initial impact means it can keep bouncing around and hurting enemies or it can bounce something like through a Gibraltar bubble, through a door and keep on going. It's honestly so wild. I cannot recommend it enough. Oh, did I also mention that shotguns being able to hold a digital threat over SMGs now give her just another little boost to her entire kit and more of a reason as to why you should use her. Let me know which legends you are using this season and check out this video right here for more on Apex Legends meta. My weapon tier list will be here when it's ready. Slam that like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, happy gaming legends.